Hey guys, what's up? It's Toast here to do a Reddit AMA with the winner of the Polygon Invitation number 6, Gumiho, who ended up beating Seed in a 4-0 best of 7 series. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Gumiho, greetings and, and thank you for uh, coming on the show. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> you played Seed and you, you, you beat him pretty bad. Why was that? Uh, he said, I, I don't think, I don't think Seed played very well that very well that day. He was getting lag and stuff, so he just he just wasn't at his best. That sounds like an excuse because I watched those games and it didn't seem that bad to me. By the way, we have a Seeker doing our translations uh, for us today. Seeker, thank you very much for coming on and helping us translate. Gumiho actually understands English pretty well, but uh, he's not confident enough to to answer all these questions. And we have some pretty in depth questions that we're going to ask. So you, you you told us that you were that Seed and you were hanging out when. Uh, when he Seed was asked, we wanted to play, right? Um, so he, he, I think he had said that him and Seed were like hanging out, right? Or like, yeah, okay. So that's kind of interesting. He's like, hey, do you like? How did that happen? Was he? Did he just ask, like, hey, do you want to play? Well, he says they've played show matches together before, and since he was there, Seed was like, hey, you want to do this with me? And I was like, yeah, let's do it, let's go. So what made you choose Terran as a main race? after a long time is playing as random. So he says, um, at that time, when he was figuring out you know, which race to play, uh, he had some pretty dank <laughs> mech, mech builds that he knew about. And he said, like, it was going to be a, a, a disappointment to not be able to use those builds. So he decided to go with Terran. What's his most unorthodox build? He likes to do Raven build orders, and he actually does them for all three matchups because they work really well. You know, he'll run around with Ravens in his army. And those auto, those new auto turrets are really good for fighting, and um, you know, obviously point defense drone is really useful to have. It's it's funny though. He says they're unique builds, they're, but they're not necessarily good builds. <laughs> do you think he's a fan of Nathanius? Because <laughs> because Nate also loves the. Uh... Loves the Raven builds. Well, he, say, he says, yeah, it, it is fun, you know, use, using Ravens. You know, players like Nathanius using Ravens, yeah, it's, it's definitely fun. But if your ultimate end goal is to win the game, it's Maybe not necessarily your best choice. <laughs> Does he ever use the uh, Seeker missiles? Sometimes. Sometimes? <laughs> sometimes against uh, sometimes against Zerg, he says. Okay. Uh, who is your favorite player of all time and why? MMA 선수랑 Benano 선수. MMA and Ben, they play game always funny. Always funny. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Very interesting. I, I agree. I, I think Beyond is really good. And I, I, I miss MMA so much. I love MMA. Oh, one of my favorite players. Just overall. I would I would, I would agree with you. He's one of my favorite too. But good English. Good job. <laughs> English choke. Sorry. English OP. <laughs> Did he recover from, from when the booth uh, fell on him? Uh, I think he was playing Zest. What, what, what is he supposed to answer? <laughs> <laughs> Did it hurt maybe? Like... Did it hurt I, when, it hit, <laughs> when the booth fell apart? <laughs> um, he, he says, um, <laughs> so when that sign <laughs> fell on him, like, he was really shocked by it. He was, he was, re he was really surprised by it. And, um, but it, like, it helped him because he won that game, you know? He was wide awake for that game. Maybe, and, uh, he, maybe he needs to have that happen every time. <laughs> and in his current status, no, he, it doesn't hurt anymore. Okay, good. He's completely <laughs> Good, good, okay. Okay, Gumiho, what is the best hotkey related tip you can give us? I don't have tip. <laughs> you don't have any tips? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. You can't give us anything? Okay. Practice maybe? Just practice. So according to Gumiho, he does have his own personal set of hotkeys that he uses, but he doesn't like them. Yeah, he can't give any tips because he himself doesn't like his own hotkeys, but the only reason he keeps using them is because he's practiced with them for such a long time. And he's actually attempted before in the past to change it up, and it, it actually made his performance worse, so he's kind of stuck. That's that's kind of weird, but it, that's very interesting. So like he just doesn't like the current like layout, but he just has no idea like how to fix it. <laughs> that's ah, that's weird. That's interesting though. That's uh, that's. I'm glad someone asked that question then, because that that's pretty interesting. So the blink DT attack that Nightmare used against you was pretty brutal. Hypothetically, if he knew it was coming. And DTs. This is so crazy. I, I think he actually blinks behind it. This is everything. so crazy. But here we go. I don't know. Okay, he blinks on top of oh! everything. Oh my God! He charges in, and the blink DTs oh! smashing through. That's so cool. Dude, he's actually doing it. This okay. is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I didn't even seen. think you'd use him like that, but yeah. Um, how would you have defended to it or responded to it? He says, if he knew beforehand 
that uh, this DT attack was going to come at him. Then he would have kept his army stationed next to his missile turrets, and then he would have brought his SCBs out so that he could have fought together with them. And then also ask as a follow-up um, if he sees that on ladder now, if, if that's more common now. Oh, this is interesting. So he says that he actually never sees it on ladder. He actually doesn't see Dark Templar, period, ever on ladders. So he feels like Dark Templar is something that people do in tournaments, like official tournaments. Well, what does he think about the current state of StarCraft 2 in Korea? The current state of StarCraft 2 is not very good right now. Obviously, it does influence him when he plays, because sometimes he kind of loses motivation. He, lost, he loses the willpower to keep going, but, but he needs to. He says he needs to keep going. It's... It's the path he's chosen, so he keeps proceeding forward. Can you ask him to, to explain, does he mean like the meta? Or is he talking more about like, with like, Korean viewership and like, the disbanding of Pro League? Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, well, the state of, uh, state of yeah, Korean SC2 is not very good because a lot of leagues have disappeared. Says, well, that's more in direct response to Pro League then? Pro League's gone, SSL's gone. Right, yeah. obviously that's, you know, part of the same thing, okay. What about like, uh, we saw like VSL, does he think that will help at all? Or like Olima League? Like anything like that or no? Uh, so he says, obviously, you know, the existence of those leagues does help out a lot, but he also admits that a lot of a lot of more players are participating in those tour tournaments now, and it's gotten much harder to win those tournaments. Right. Well, I guess too, with you know, when pl when, when pro league was around, I mean, teams like MVP and stuff, they were still free to compete in those things, whereas all the pro league teams, you know, couldn't and they could, they, you know, they really couldn't stream either. So I mean, that does make a lot of sense. So Gumiho, what is your what is your living situation now that the team houses uh, are all closed uh, and the StarCraft Two still full time for you? Uh, so he says yes. Uh, since the team houses are closed, he lives at home now. And in terms of StarCraft Two full time as a pro gamer, he wants to play StarCraft Two as much as he can as long as it still exists um, but he's not sure how much longer he can go on because obviously he has his mandatory military service that he needs to complete and um, Starcraft 2 as a whole the prize pool has been dropping um, so he doesn't know how how much longer he's going to be able to stay in this scene um, how long until he has to complete his uh, his military uh, prerequisite uh, he says he, he, he can't give like a an exact amount of time left. Uh, like when when they contact him when they contact him in terms of his military service he'll uh, he'll delay and um, he estimates probably around a year or two less probably. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm not 100 percent sure on how the man the mandatory system works. I think like if you're doing really well you can keep delaying it, but obviously like you can only like, do it so much maybe like right. You, know? you, you can you can delay it up till a certain age, um, and then no matter what, like you've got to go. Yeah, but then after that, like you have to go. And also, pro gamers personally themselves, they kind of have to figure out, you know, When's the best time? how much longer can they put it off? Is there is their body physically going to be able to handle, you know, being in the military? Because if you push it off too long, then it's just going to get harder for you. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, I, I had an I had an interview with Nada, uh, two years ago. And he said he regretted waiting so long to go into the army because it was just physically very taxing on him. And he yeah. couldn't really, his body just couldn't really handle sure. the amount of work he had to do. Sure. I guess the, the, and the other part of that is if you're going in then, it's like, how am I going to be when I come out? You know? Because you see players like, like like we talked about, like Seed and stuff and like Golden, who have come out and like now are playing again. But like, there's still, a, I, I think there's still a skill gap though, obviously. You had to wonder, like, can you come back? Ask him. Um, if he if, if, if when he goes into the military and he comes out when he comes out will he still try to play pro games or will he go to school or ask him what his plan is if after military after completing his military service it's going to be very difficult to continue as a pro gamer uh, for StarCraft 2 specifically because there's going to be a, a skill gap I, uh, I asked him has he thought about pursuing other professional games and he said that's hard too because of his age because he's, he's already uh, pretty well advanced uh, in terms of pro gaming years oh, and game after game the military and military is you know is about a year and a half to two years so that's that's time you're never getting back he said he would like to pursue like a, a coaching position you know a coaching or a supervisor position if possible but that's going to be very difficult too because because you, you just you don't know what the pro gaming scene is going to be like in the future yeah he says he, he he probably will have to pursue some other field well i think we all hope that esports obviously sticks around as long as possible because i obviously we're all passionate about it um, ask him like what what would he what, like what would he want to do if it's not esports? 
깊게 생각해 본 적이 없어요. 근데 뭐라도 해야죠. He says he doesn't know. He hasn't given it much thought. 아무거나. Yeah? He says he has to do something though. 모르겠어요, 아직. Right. He'll have to find something to do. You gotta figure that out. Okay. Gumiho, did Invasion Esports ever pay you back for the prize money that they said they are that they owed you? Invasion. Uh, to this day, he has still not been paid from Invasion Esports. In fact, uh, they cut off all contact with him. And Sebu actually said, "Hey, I'm not gonna pay you anymore." At, at, initially, Sebu said, "Yes, I'll pay you. Yes, I'll pay you." They said that for about a year, and then once it became public, once Choya made it public, Sebu said, uh, "I'm not gonna pay you." That's God. Seriously, that 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 literally pisses me off so much. Like, to take advantage of players like that and just not to pay them. Like, and for I mean, it pisses me off too. Like, that's just not that's not right. That's messed up. Ask him how much it was. I don't remember how, like how, like how much they owed him, but how much was it? Dreamex 상금. Dreamex 상금 준우승 상금이요. 그 세금 떼고 얼마인지 정확히 모르겠는데 그때 상금이 500만 원이었어요. 월급은 다 받았던 것 같은데. 월급은 다 받았어요. 상금을 그 쉐어가 있어서 받고 나서 저한테 준다 그랬는데 그냥 안 받고 되게 받고 안 줬어요 저한테. But he says um in terms of like his salary, you know, his contracted salary, he he as far as he can remember, he got everything. Mm -hmm. But they didn't give him they didn't they never gave him his DreamHack prize money. Uh cuz cuz the DreamHack you know, because tournament organizations they pay the they right. pay the team organizations, and then the team organization is supposed to pay the player. Right. Uh, but yeah, Gumiho never got his five thousand dollars from DreamHack. That's so dirty! Oh my god! Especially like with like again like what's going on right now with like between like Hearthstone, like Lambo, um, and Major. Like, what a shit organization that I don't think any of us should support anymore. Like, fuck those dudes. Ask him if if he could tell Sabu one thing right now, what would it be? <laughs> 야 하고 싶은 말이 없는데? 그 야, 잘 먹고 잘 살아. Gumi is a nice guy. He, he, there's nothing particularly he wants to say. Just you know, um, all right, dude, you go on living your life. Good luck. That's true. Like, like I hope that dude feel. I hope he feels guilty as fuck knowing like that he fucked him over. Like I hope that like festers inside of him. Like I hope it causes him discomfort. Like that... not just Sebu, but like. All these other team owners, oh, yeah. like ever in the players. ever in the history of StarCraft II, that have screwed over players, like you know, fuck them. Like seriously, I hope they feel guilty and I hope they have a miserable life. Yep. I just want to say this to to Sabu directly, and I know you're never gonna watch this, but dude, fuck you, you piece of shit. Pay these dudes what you owe them. Like, what's the problem? Like, you you get paid, right? Like, why shouldn't they? Fuck you, man. Um, well, Gumi Hall, we all love you very much. We we want you to do well. Uh, thank you for being on the show. Uh, Seeker, thank you for translating. We really appreciate that. Appreciate that. We couldn't have done it without you tonight, for sure. Um, thank you to our sponsors, Matcherino and SCT Replay Stats. Uh, thank you from Polygon Gaming, uh, who puts on these events. So basically, if you, if you came in late and you didn't see it, uh, this weekend is Gumiho played Seed in the best of seven, beat him 4-0. Uh, really cool. Um, and then we also had Sue Classic and Classic 1-4-3. And that'll be our maybe our next interview. We have to see if Classic responds. So, but uh, if you like our content, uh, tune in, um, follow the channel. We appreciate that. Um, and then I run a separate show called the Dang Shrine uh, with uh, my co-host Zilly. It's a weekly talk show uh, for StarCraft Two. Our guest on Wednesday, this Wednesday at 8 p.m. will be uh, Zombie Grub from Base Trade, and we'll kind of be talking to her about uh, what's been going on with Nation Wars and her experiences there. Um, so thank you for everyone for tuning in. We appreciate that, and we'll see you later. Bye. Yep. Thank you, guys. Oh. Okay, so Space Whales, you asked Gumiho, if you could be any animal from Africa, which one would you be? And Gumiho says he'll be a lion, because lion is king of the jungle, oh. and even though Gumiho has never won first place in a tournament before, if he's a lion, then he would be king of the jungle. That's a... Legit answer, like holy shit! <laughs> like, I know, right? He actually like, thought about that for a minute. I would have just like said some shit like a giraffe. <laughs> I wasn't expecting Gumiho to give such a good answer. Like that's such a random question. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good one.